SpaceX is on the brink of Starship's fourth integrated flight test. The launch vehicle is being prepared for the wet dress rehearsal, while the launch site infrastructure is receiving critical upgrades. The Starship test stand at Massey's recently received new components installed. Join us as we uncover these latest developments. Starship 29 and Super Heavy Booster 11 prototypes, which will be launched on the fourth integrated flight test, are being prepared for the wet dress rehearsal at the build site. Ship 29 is receiving heat tile upgrades inside the high bay. Tiles were removed from several locations, especially those expected to experience the highest vibration during liftoff and maximum re-entry heating. Insights from Flight 3 data likely influence this action. Ship 29 now requires new tiles with improved adhesives to ensure they remain securely attached throughout all phases of Flight 4. Meanwhile, Booster 11 is undergoing thorough inspections, checkouts, and assembly verifications on a processing stand inside the Mega Bay. The hot stage ring installation on the booster is pending. Upon readiness, Ship 29 and Booster 11 will be transported to the launch site for the full stack wet dress rehearsal. A successful wet dress rehearsal will set the stage for the fourth integrated flight test, currently targeted for May. At the launch site, teams continue repair work on the orbital launch mount and launch tower arms. Extensive welding activity has been observed in recent days. At least 10 booster hold-down clamps were removed from the launch mount, and new ones have been installed. The launch mount comprises 20 hold-down clamps, designed to provide a stable and secure anchoring mechanism for the booster during the initial stages of launch preparation. These clamps are released once the engines ignite and the booster is ready for liftoff. Whether SpaceX will replace the remaining hold-down clamps on the launch mount remains to be seen. The front bore of the booster quick disconnect mechanism, which was removed a week ago, was replaced with a brand new one a few days ago. The quick disconnect mechanism is designed to send propellants, gases, electric power, and communication signals to the booster before liftoff. The mechanism will quickly disconnect and retract from the vehicle just before liftoff. The door is designed to shield the ports on the mechanism from the booster engine plumes. The door might have been damaged during Flight 3, which necessitated a replacement. The newly installed door underwent testing in the past week to ensure functionality. Meanwhile, extensive repairs and upgrades have been underway on the launch tower rocket catching and stacking arms, also known as the chopsticks, for the past two weeks. An actuator was removed from the left arm and replaced with a slightly upgraded version. The left arm was then tested several times to verify the actuator's operations. The right arm's actuator may also be replaced soon. Hydraulic actuators convert hydraulic pressure into mechanical force, or motion. They precisely control the horizontal movement of the launch tower arms, governing their opening and closing actions, crucial for both stacking the launch vehicle on the launch mount and facilitating future booster catching. During the upcoming fourth integrated flight test, Booster 11 will execute a simulated landing in the Gulf of Mexico, maneuvering as if it were aiming to be caught by the launch tower arms. In other words, the booster will act as if there were a virtual tower out in the ocean. If that maneuver is successful, SpaceX intends to attempt catching the booster with the tower arms as early as Flight 5. The ongoing upgrades, including actuator replacement, aim to enhance the speed, precision, and reliability of the tower arms for a successful booster catch in future flight tests. More upgrades to the launch mount and the launch tower can be expected in the coming days. As per Elon Musk, Starship launch pad infrastructures are designed to be rapidly reusable. Achieving a high frequency of Starship launches in the future depends on the pad's immediate readiness for the next flight, with minimal repairs post-launch. After the first three integrated flight tests, extensive launch pad repairs and upgrades were required. Hopefully, by learning from the upcoming flight tests, SpaceX can make the required adjustments to the launch pad in the future, facilitating rapid reuse. The work to bring the horizontal propellant storage tanks online is progressing at a faster pace. While the eight existing tanks for liquid methane have been in operation for over a year, efforts are now focused on activating the nine newly installed tanks for liquid oxygen and nitrogen storage. Plumbing work is currently underway to connect these tanks to pumps and heat exchangers at the tank farm. Originally, the tank farm consisted of eight vertical tanks for propellant, water, and liquid nitrogen storage. Two of those tanks, which were originally designed to store methane and water, were scrapped in January. As per the latest developments, SpaceX is now preparing to scrap two more tanks. The tanks used for storing water and liquid nitrogen will be the ones that will be decommissioned. Since more vertical tanks are being retired, it can be inferred that the new horizontal tanks will likely become operational within a few months, potentially before the fifth flight test. Construction of the static fire test stand and flame trench at the Massey's test site is progressing rapidly. 
A Starship quick disconnect mechanism was installed on a support stand the past week. This mechanism is responsible for supplying propellants, gases, electric power, and communication signals to the ship for static fire testing. Following the installation of the quick disconnect, the support stand was lifted and installed over the flame trench. This image will give you an idea of how the quick disconnect is positioned over the flame trench. The ship will be moved near the quick disconnect and connected to it for testing. Flame trench construction works are also in progress. The metal framework that will support the water-cooled flame deflector is currently being installed in the flame trench. The flame deflector will be constructed by welding these three water channel sections that were already delivered to Massey's a few weeks ago. Once assembled, the deflector will be placed atop the support framework to direct exhaust gases away from the test stand during static fire tests. To shield against the intense heat of the Raptor exhaust plume, water will be sprayed through holes drilled into the deflector, forming a protective layer during testing. This new test stand will allow SpaceX to conduct longer static fire tests, compared to those presently performed at the launch site. The data accumulated from such longer and more powerful tests will help SpaceX validate engine performance and system integration, conduct safety checks, and make necessary adjustments before the actual launch. Now, let's discuss some of the latest updates from the world of science and technology. NASA is seeking innovative ideas to reduce costs and shorten the schedule for its Mars Sample Return Program, which has encountered delays due to budget and scheduling issues. The Mars Sample Return Program, a joint effort with the European Space Agency, aims to return samples collected by the Perseverance Mars rover. The mission's architecture involves Perseverance delivering samples to a future robotic lander, equipped with a rocket to propel the samples off the Martian surface. Subsequently, a spacecraft orbiting Mars would capture the sample container and return it safely to Earth. The mission will involve two launches in the early 2030s. One would involve the launch of the sample retrieval lander, carrying the Mars Ascent vehicle, the rocket that will launch samples off the red planet and into space. The other would involve the launch of the European Space Agency's Earth Return Orbiter, which will orbit Mars and wait for the Mars Ascent vehicle. The mission is estimated to cost between $8 billion and $11 billion, with samples to be returned by 2040. However, this timeline and budget are deemed unacceptable by NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. The bottom line is that $11 billion is too expensive and not returning samples until 2040 is unacceptably too long. It's the decade of the 2040s that we're going to be landing astronauts on Mars. To address these challenges, NASA issued a request for proposals on April 16, seeking ideas on alternative approaches for the overall Mars sample return architecture, or specific elements like the sample retrieval lander or Mars ascent vehicle. The goal is to find a solution that can significantly reduce costs and schedules while still meeting the scientific objectives of the mission. NASA is particularly interested in heritage technologies that have been proven in the past and are not overly reliant on new technologies. The agency hopes to receive proposals that could return an unspecified number of samples, not necessarily all the roughly 30 samples that the Perseverance rover will have on board when it completes its work. Short proposals will be due on May 17, with a selection expected by fall 2024. The Starliner spacecraft has been integrated into the Atlas V rocket at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station Pad 41, in preparation for its crew flight test to the International Space Station, scheduled for May. Featuring an innovative weldless structure, the Boeing Starliner comes in two main parts, a 4.6-meter wide reusable crew module that carries the astronauts inside, and a service module that provides power and propulsion. The capsule in the service module will remain attached from launch until shortly before atmospheric re-entry. The capsule, reusable up to 10 times, with a six-month turnaround time, is designed to accommodate seven passengers, or a mix of crew and cargo, for missions to low Earth orbit. For NASA service missions to the International Space Station, it will carry up to four crew members and scientific research. The Starliner crew flight test to the ISS has been delayed by several years due to numerous technical problems. Software issues during the first uncrewed Starliner mission in 2019 forced controllers to abandon their attempt to reach the space station and the spacecraft returned to Earth safely under parachute. NASA identified dozens of problems, which Boeing sought to address ahead of a second uncrewed launch attempt. During the second uncrewed mission in May 2022, the spacecraft did meet all its major objectives, including a successful berthing with the ISS. However, after that second uncrewed test flight, Boeing identified new concerns with Starliner. The company discovered that the tape used extensively in the vehicle was flammable, requiring the removal of more than a mile of the material from the spacecraft. 
Boeing also discovered that part of Starliner's parachute system could not handle the required loads that could occur during off-nominal landings and had to modify the system. Having overcome those setbacks, NASA is now looking forward to Starliner's first crewed mission next month. Astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams will be the first crew members to fly aboard the Starliner. Both of them are veterans of two previous space flights to the space station. They will spend six days aboard the station conducting scientific research before undocking and performing a parachute-assisted landing in New Mexico. Following a successful crew flight test, NASA will begin the final process of certifying the Starliner spacecraft and systems for long-duration crew missions to the space station. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.